Jesus and Mary. Now Today's parable is very much like the one we read this past Sunday. This past Sunday was from Matthew chapter 24, if I'm not mistaken, 24 or 25. This one is from Luke 19. And so there's a little bit of a variation which explains a different spiritual truth. Okay, we're seeing our Lord here. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And there are those who that think the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. And so our Lord explains in this parable that it's not going to be immediately. And that's why he says, a noble man went off to a distant country. Okay, again, this is our Lord who ascends into heaven, that distant country of heaven, uh, after he has risen from the dead and after 40 days of appearing to his disciples, he ascends into heaven. Or he's, and he's there uh, to obtain, receive the kingship for himself and then to return. So we read in today's first reading from the book of Revelation, God the Father on a throne, and he's going to hand over the kingdom to his son. And so before our Lord leaves, he calls his 10 servants and he gives them 10 gold coins. So in Sunday's parable, instead it was three servants and he gave them different amounts to one five, another two, and another one. These different amounts of talents. That um, demonstrates that God gives different measures of graces and gifts to different people. Instead, here we have ten servants. They each receive one gold coin. It's going to demonstrate a different spiritual reality. Not the different measure of God's gifts, but the different degrees of generosity which we, with which we use those gifts. Because to the first who received one gold coin, he comes back and he says, I have earned 10 additional ones. He says, well done, good servant. Take charge of 10 cities. That was a soul who was extremely generous with God and his graces, uh, loving him, as much as he could. The next one, who also received only one gold coin, made five more. In other words, with the graces he received, he was not as generous in cooperating, in corresponding. So he didn't make 10, he made five. And so his eternal reward corresponded to the degree of his love. He doesn't receive 10 cities, take charge of five cities. And finally, the, the third one here, the last example, is basically the same as we saw on Sunday. In other words, he did nothing with the gifts and graces that he received from God, and so he is condemned. Now we see that there were these other citizens in this parable who said, we do not want this man to be our king. Right? These aren't people who receive any talents, no supernatural gifts. They basically reject the faith. They reject Jesus Christ as their king. We do not want him to be our king. And of course, our Lord respects everyone's free will. But there are consequences. And so when this king returns, what does he say? Now remember, this is Jesus. He's walking to Jerusalem. And he's explaining this parable to everyone around him. And he says, Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey to Jerusalem. He finishes with those terrifying words. This is unbelievable. But this refers to a reality that will take place at the second coming of Christ. And this is all what we are preparing for in the liturgy as we head towards the end of this liturgical year. So, so much to meditate on, so much to consider, and uh, so much to change, right, in our own lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.